Friends, we are gathered here today to look at and talk about the Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K. Before you get started saying that I'm like three camera models behind the schedule, yes, I know. But also, how could you say that and not say that Blackmagic is 10 years behind schedule since this is the first time they actually started implementing anamorphic modes? Anyway, let's get started. Oh, and big shout out to Sifan Ren who helped me learn a lot about this camera. <laughs> I always find camera reviews so daunting because cameras have so many functionalities, it's hard to be concise. So I'll look at this one mostly from the anamorphic filmmaking perspective. This is Blackmagic's first full frame camera and going with the L mount made life so much easier for me. Being a mirrorless mount, you can adapt it to pretty much anything except other mirrorless mounts. While this is not Blackmagic's first camera to offer anamorphic D squeeze, it is the first one to offer anamorphic modes which crop into the sensor combined with in-camera de-squeeze to make both filming and post a lot easier. Besides using a full-frame sensor, the BMCC also allows us to film in 6K open gate, adding height to the captured image and turning the usually 16x9 aspect ratio into 3x2. That's a top-notch anamorphic feature. This open gate mode combined with 1.6x lenses such as the Surrey Saturn give you a native 2.4 to 1 aspect ratio. Get ready for a small roller coaster. The downside of how Blackmagic implemented these anamorphic de-squeezes is they only offer one option at a time. The one that, combined to the sensor aspect ratio, gives you 2.4 to 1 aspect ratio. What? Back to our original example with 6K 3x2 open gate. When I turn on the anamorphic de-squeeze, I only have one option, 1.6 times, or none. Now if I switch to the traditional 6x5 sensor aspect ratio, I can get 2 times de-squeeze, but nothing else. Along the same lines, Super 35 4x3 only works with 1.8 times. So while they technically offer a bunch of de-squeeze options, you can only pick one at a time depending on your sensor aspect ratio. Kinda rough. We don't always film in the perfect combination of sensor aspect ratio and anamorphic de-squeeze. There's usually some cropping involved, and that's okay. I said this was going to be a roller coaster, so now the upside. Enabling de-squeeze means the metadata for the squeeze factor gets recorded into the files, and you don't have to manually de-squeeze it when you bring it into Resolve. Even the B-Raw player shows the clips as they are supposed to look. This is an awesome feature and I wish all other camera manufacturers that offer in-camera de-squeeze implemented the same. We also have the option to crop into our full frame sensor into Super 35, which is what I'm doing here, and for anamorphics more specifically Super 35 4x3. The sensor area used is 24.33mm by 18.25mm which is fractions of millimeters smaller than the golden standard of Super 35 for perf, 24.89 by 18.66 millimeters. Good job on those numbers, Blackmagic. Now give us support for two times lenses on this mode. Jumping over to post for a little bit, I have to point out that B-RAW is wonderful. This is my first native RAW recording camera. No, I'm not counting RAW recording with Magic Lantern 10 years ago. And what you can do with the information stored in the files is mind-blowing. Plus, 
BM Film Gen 5 color science is gorgeous. And bringing all of this into Resolve makes for butter smooth editing. Having different options for compression is good, but not having ProRes at all is a bit rough when it comes to smaller projects that don't need to take up so much space. Like this YouTube video, I'm filming it in RAW. Speaking of space, the original firmware of the camera didn't give you the option to delete any recorded clips in camera, but that has fortunately been addressed in the latest updates. I just couldn't find the format card menu. The body is made of, I quote, lightweight carbon fiber polycarbonate composite, which feels just like plastic. It is good for saving weight, but gives out a cheap vibe. On top of that, rigging is almost mandatory, as recording to CF Express Type B and using NPF 550s for power is a crippling approach to the power contained in this camera. You're pretty much expected to rig it up with VLOX and a USB-C SSD drive. Onto the screen. The size of it is a change from what I'm used to. Focusing was way easier and being able to pinch to zoom made interacting with critical focus super intuitive. The touchscreen interface in general doesn't create any barriers and we still have a good number of physical buttons to get stuff done without greasy fingerprints on the screen. Most of the menus are clear and easy to navigate, except when we're trying to get deeper into different frame rate options, as these show up in a different page and resolution. But one setting affects the other, forcing you to go back and forth at least a couple times to get all of your numbers straight. On to more good things. The Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K includes all the support you'd expect in terms of monitoring your image with zebras, frame guides, false color, focus peaking, and more. You can also bring in custom LUTs and even bake them to the files for an easier delivery process. In terms of ports, we have a full-size HDMI, a 2-pin Limo for power, USB-C for an external hard drive or for connecting the camera to a computer, and two mini XLR port for proper audio. If you're like me, there's also an auxiliary jack for simpler microphones and headphones. All in all, I'm in love with the ability to record B-RAW. I'm also torn because no matter what, the files are huge compared to what I'm used to. I like the full frame sensor and the anamorphic support of 3x2, 6x5, and 4x3 aspect ratios, but I don't love that those are locked to specific anamorphic squeeze values. That's an easy firmware fix. Yet, Burning that squeeze metadata into the clips is probably my favorite feature in the camera. As everybody already hammered on, it's a weird shaped camera, but once you put a cage on it, it's much easier to work. There's a ton of other things about this camera that are awesome, but I'll leave those to the experts and focus on the stuff that I really know. What are your thoughts on the Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K? What are your favorite features on it? How do you feel about seeing other cameras here on the channel and discussing what they bring to the table in terms of anamorphic support? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for hanging out, and I'll see you next time. Chit the